So uh, the option of having those documents with the same level of moral authority, doctrinal authority, is, uh, is passe. You can still get a two-thirds vote, but then you refer it to Rome, and by the time it comes back from Rome, two or three years have gone by, and the moment has passed. So that is probably the single biggest thing. It's a juridical thing, and it's a 1998 document called Apostolos Suos. There are other parts of the answer, and I'll just briefly, I'll just say this. The bishops, after the sexual abuse crisis, have lost a lot of credibility. That's not a secret, right? Everybody knows that. When the bishops speak on social issues, even if it's economics, people read that through the eyes of the sex abuse crisis. They mismanaged it. They bungled it. They allowed horrible practices, predatory, don't, don't get me started. Living in Boston the last five years has been one of the hardest, in my life as a priest, one of the hardest times. So that's part of the problem. And I also think that the recent appointments of bishops, I don't know too many of them well, actually I've got some very nice bishops, I suspect they're not as bold as our bishops were. The ones who were appointed in the 60s and 70s, uh, and you can go back, there was Paul VI and his certain apostolic nuncios who were in on the appointment of bishops, Shadow, et cetera. Um, it's gotten a little more restrictive and they look for doctrinal orthodoxy right down the road. These are not men who are likely to be bold on economic so I still point to the top, the fact that we haven't had a social encyclical in 14 years, and also to that mid middle level of the US bishops, sharing your frustration, wishing it would change, and saying, maybe we have to be very patient, and, and pressure, pressure our bishops to say reasonable things. There was a bit of a backlash, and I welcomed it. After so many bishops during the last electoral cycle in the year 2004 said so many things about Catholic voting, they overplayed their hand. That was the perception. Single issue voting, which is which is the position way out of the mainstream. It's not even in the mainstream of the bishops' conference. But there were eight or ten bishops who wanted us to vote only on one issue. And uh, I gave a few talks at different campuses and parishes during that time. Everybody seemed to want to talk to a social ethicist during the run-up to the 2004 elections. And any time there was a question from the audience uh, saying uh, something like, um, We've got to hold our bishops accountable. You know, the, the, the moderate bishops need to rein in those really, really right-wing ones. People would get up and applaud. They weren't applauding me. They were applauding the question. Uh, and I think that there is a center of gravity, kind of an intelligent center of gravity in the Catholic lay community. They know when their faith is being distorted. And uh, if they are able to stand very firmly, I think they can make a difference. Sometimes the leadership isn't top-down. It's bottom-up. And sometimes that's Take just one more. We're just about uh, yeah here. Professor, for the for the concerns that were expressed by that gentleman back there, I've been using your book for the last few years to do a social justice study in every spring. I've narrowed it down to chapter four. Chapter four is a key chapter. That's right, exactly. Um, I think it is important that uh, there are, are, are parishioners out there um, be able to engage the dialogue both outside in developing the Excellent insight. I'm always reminded that this is not the first era of globalization. The age of exploration, both of those gentlemen that you mentioned, Casas and Victoria, were, in, uh, were intellectual figures during an age of exploration, early colonization, Spanish colonies in the New World especially, and uh, people were thinking exactly some of the same thoughts. It reminds me that although history doesn't repeat itself, it does <coughs> rhyme. And if we don't learn, this is an important Santiago. We don't learn from the mistakes of the past, and boy, Nelson Casas was aware of some of the mistakes, treatment of natives, treatment of Africans, then we are doomed to repeat it. So 
So yeah, in that spirit, let's let's say that our generation, the intellectuals in our generation, and the common people, can hopefully learn from the mistakes of the past, learn a way to treat people equally with equal regard for their rights, a concept that wasn't around very much back in the 15 and 1600s, and can make can turn that corner from a time where people are seeking exploitation of others to a time when we will be looking not just for profits, but really for the well-being of all people around the world. Excellent insight. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.